We are back on WGN TV Political Report. So you heard from the incumbent. Now we shift to the other side of the race for Illinois Attorney General. Attorney and Republican nominee Thomas DeVore joins me this morning to talk about his campaign. Mr. DeVore, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Good morning. So you're a civil law attorney from downstate Sorrento. Um, you did have an elective office in a two-year term on bond, the Bond County Board about a decade ago. But the Office of Illinois Attorney General handles both civil and criminal cases. Um, talk to me about your skills in handling both sides of the office. Yes, absolutely. I have spent a lot of time doing criminal defense work in my 12-year career as an attorney, so I do know the criminal justice system. You know, you have to have some knowledge of it, but I would point out that Attorney General Lisa Madigan, who I thought did a fine job, had really no criminal experience. So in that position as Attorney General, you have very talented people that work for you that can handle both of those matters. So again, the Attorney General needs to lead those efforts without actively participating in them, but I have spent time as a criminal defense lawyer as well as civil practice. And of course, you came to the front pages of the news with the lawsuits that you filed against the governor, over 30 of them regarding mask mandates and other COVID-related uh, principles in the pandemic. Um, and in fact, you even beat out the party-supported candidate uh, for, for this role. So uh, in the role of the attorney general, you're now part or would be part of a state officer team. Do you see yourself working with the governor or more of the challenge role? Well, you, you have to work with them. I'm obviously. assuming a Pritzker if Prisker is governor. Sure, certainly if Governor Prisker. Again, those mandate lawsuits that we're referring to were never about the actual topics of masks or vaccines, but more to do with the executive's role in our government. And so from my perspective, the governor was exceeding the authority that he had to just arbitrarily issue those mandates versus the legislature actually taking a more active role in pursuing those policies. So if I'm the attorney general, I'm merely asking that the governor play his part the legislature pay, play their part and not have that imbalance of power, which is what I was witnessing for the last couple of years. I would work with them absolutely with the understanding of that everyone has to respect the role of the other branches of government. So if hypothetically, if there is a, an uptick in COVID and the governor finds himself having to do some more things and assuming that it, it's Pritzker in this role um, and he institutes more, more orders, how do you see your role as attorney general in that situation? Now? I would sue the governor merely for the purpose of saying, if we need the policies that the governor is trying to, to seek, that's fine. The legislature needs to do that and not wielding that executive power. And I would do the same thing, just so we're clear, if it was a Governor Bailey, because it's about the role that the governor should play. We as people should not be looking to the executive branch to rule over us that way. It needs to be the legislature. And if our legislature passes those policies through the proper procedures, I don't have any problem with that. But we need to have our legislature doing that and not a governor because it opens it up to too much arbitrary decision making by one man or one woman versus the deliberative process of the legislature. Yeah, so that's an important point because I was saying Pritzker because I, I saw the sort of the difference between you, but you're saying, hey, it could be Bailey. It doesn't matter. This is about what the governor does. Yeah, it's about what the governor does. It was never about Governor Pritzker to me. If it would have been Governor Rauner, I would have been doing the same thing because it was about what the office was doing, never about the person. All right. These days, of course, priorities seem to be inflation, crime, abortion. Let's tackle those if we can. On Certainly. the abortion issue, you have said you're pro-life. Um, how would you use the attorney, could you use the, the Office of Attorney General to further that viewpoint? Well, if you, to the extent you said I'm pro-life, I'd like to see where that's said because my opinion on abortion, I've never publicly stated. But let me give what I would do as well, attorney I took that general. in an article that referenced that too. Okay, so. right, yeah. So when people ask me the question where my position is on that, I'm like, my personal beliefs and my purpose of the attorney general is different. We have a law right now in Illinois, the Illinois Health Care Reproductive Act. That law creates a fundamental right for a woman to choose. That law needs to be protected by the attorney general's office because it was passed by the legislature. So if I'm the attorney general, that is the law that I will uphold. It gives a woman a right to choose, and that's the way the law is. And if that's not the way that we should operate or govern as a state, then the legislature would have to change that. But the attorney general, my office, as well as Mr. Raul's. I think we, him and I see that the same way. We will defend that law because that's the law that the people passed. So it sounds like your job is to defend laws passed by the legislature. It's not about policy issues and social issues. It should not be about policy and social issues in the attorney general's office because this is about law and what the laws say and the laws to be enforced. And again, we can talk about that with the Safety Act too, but the, the attorney general where Mr. Raul and I differ, which I think is something for people to consider, is it being doing social policy engineering through that office is not appropriate. Well, with regard to the Safety Act, um, I, and I think I think you have threatened to, to file a lawsuit against it regarding that question is, are there some good things in the act that you would like to see saved? Well, again, there are several things. One of them is the, camp, the part of the camera provisions. 
there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a good idea. But the Safety Act in and of itself, we have to ask ourselves, first and foremost, regardless of some of the substance within it, was it procedurally passed in a constitutional manner? The answer is no, it was not. There's 50 now, eight states attorney, 58 states attorneys, Democrat and Republican, that have brought an action against the governor and Attorney General Raul for violating constitutional principles the way it was enacted. And I think that's something that the Attorney General should have taken issue with. Attorney General Raul should have been making the arguments that these state's attorneys are making, which doesn't mean there aren't good parts of the law. It just means the manner of which it was passed was unconstitutional. It's crystal clear. In the issue of crimes and, 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 and uh, uh, in general and, and, and violence, guns, um, the, the current Attorney General has organized the organized uh, retail crime task force. What would you do? to get a control of guns and crime in the state? Well, his retail crime task force is not a bad idea that he's done. One of the things, though, that we don't talk about with retail crime, especially in Chicago and Cook County, is that Kim Fox has arbitrarily raised the level of how much the value he needs to be before it goes to a felony to $1,000. I think the Attorney General should have taken issue with that and actually stepped in and said to the extent that people that are violating the criminal code at a felony level and not what Kim Fox has arbitrarily said it at, he should intervene and prosecute some of those cases. I, I know you have several uh, filed several libel defamation lawsuits over the past few years about things people have said and whatever. I'm sort of curious, this step into the public world, public realm significantly, um, did you have the thick skin? to just deal with this as opposed to go the lawsuit route? I've absolutely got the thick skin. And I think somebody else that has thick skin is Governor Pritzker. But you know what? Not that long ago, he sent a letter saying that you needed to quit defaming him, too, or he was going to actually file a lawsuit. So there's a line between having a thick skin. Because trust me, the last three years that I've been doing the things that I've done, you know, I get death threats, I get called all kinds of things. But when it crosses over to where you're actually accusing someone of a crime, committing crimes and things of that nature, politicians like myself, even the governor and even Mr. Raul have the ability to defend themselves. And again, I have done that on occasion, and so has the governor. So, All right. Um, Republican nominee for Illinois Attorney General, Tom DeBoer, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Give you a chance to let people know what your platform is. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. If you're voting in Cook County, you'll face a long list of judges who want your support. So up next, a helpful guide that can help you decipher who to choose. Don't go anywhere.